So the PlayStation Portal is a pretty controversial topic right now because it's a brand new Sony handheld device but it's, it's a little bit weird because it's a streaming only device. It's not like a PS Vita or a PSP where you can play games anytime, anywhere without Wi-Fi. But I personally think that there are a lot of reasons that you should purchase this PlayStation Portal device but I'm also gonna bring up some negative things about it. So firstly, I'm gonna start off with like the pros, right? We're gonna do the pros and then the cons. Firstly, it's an extremely convenient device. Most people have a PS5 hooked up to their main TV in the house. Of course, some people don't have it on their TV. They have it on like their personal monitor or something like that. But many people have it hooked up to like the main TV in the house that everybody uses in the household, meaning there's limited time to use that TV. And imagine being like a parent, you're a dad or whatever. You come home from work. You just want to play some video games for like an hour or two. You want to relax, but your family is using the TV or your kids or something. That's perfect if you have the brand brand new Sony PlayStation Portal because you could just play your PS5 right on the device. You could chill on the couch with your family while you're just enjoying your own games. You don't have to bother them by changing the TV, making them all upset. So I feel like that's probably the biggest reason to buy this. It's just the convenience of using this around the house if you can't use your PS5 because the TV is not available or something. On my previous video, I saw several comments relating to this where people said that this is perfect for them because they can't always use their tv and they would love something like this so they could actually make progress in their game because they never get to use their tv or their ps5 so i definitely would say that's the number one reason why you should purchase this even though this console just streams your games it's extremely responsive and it feels like you're just playing it natively on the device according to different youtube videos that i've seen of people actually testing out the product I have never tested out this product. I'm not like a Sony ambassador or anything like that. Like Sony probably doesn't even know who I am. I'm just saying that I've seen videos and it's extremely responsive and it's not like how the typical streaming a game on a device would be in your mind because as we all know, streaming games is pretty bad for the most part. Occasionally it can run somewhat well, but there's always some sort of like delay or just some bugs or you just lose connection like instantly. Also, the resolution is great too. It's 1080p, I think that's great. And I also believe that Sony understands that this is not a product for every single person. Like, I don't think they're trying to make a, a product that's gonna end up in every single person's household. I think that they understand that this is for a select group of people that can get the most convenient use out of this product. And they've seen the success of other handhelds recently. Of course, the Switch is like one of the biggest consoles of all time. And the Stream Deck is extremely popular and the Stream Deck is great. The Switch is great too. They all have their own perks, right? But I think Sony is trying something new and that's pretty refreshing to see. Like streaming games right now isn't very fun. It's pretty laggy. Streaming games on the Switch is like the most brutal experience ever. It's, I don't even know if they still have that feature, but you, I know you at least could stream games from the Switch and it's just like the most laggy thing on the planet. It's awful. Streaming your Xbox, like on your phone or whatever, it's like, you know, it's not a guarantee it's gonna work. It's like 50-50. Personally, most times I've actually tried to stream from my Xbox, it literally didn't even work. Even when I was in the same house, like I would play for a few minutes and you know, there'd be a little bit of delay with like the controller or whatever, but like that's not too bad. And then it would just lose connection in like five minutes. So streaming has a long way to go. But with this console, it seems like Sony is kind of trying to advance streaming. And if they have found a way to stream video games that have a solid frame rate and a solid connection that doesn't drop or lose or become disconnected in like a few minutes, I think that's a huge step in modern gaming. Because I know streaming video games is a really weird concept, but it seems like that's how the industry is going. Like video game companies or brands, whatever. They're opening up streaming as another option. Like, I don't think that digital media or physical media are going anywhere anytime soon. Like, I'm not saying that streaming video games is going to replace downloading a game or buying a game at the store. I just think video game companies are thinking of streaming as a brand new way to play video games. So Sony's found like a really great way to stream games. I think that's, I think that's great. So let's talk about the price of the console or device, whatever. I know it's not a console. People are hating on me for calling it a console. I know it's not its own console. I just don't know what else to call it. I guess I'll call it a device. This device is going to be about $200 or is going to be $200, which is steep but at the same time it's not like terrible because the economy right now you know everything's super expensive it cost me like sixty dollars to fill up my gas tank so imagine just like two and a half gas tanks could buy me a playstation portal right well what would i rather have gas 
or PlayStation Portal? I don't know. Leave a comment down below. It's kind of a lot in the sense that like this is only a streaming specific device. Like you can only stream games on it and you can't natively play games on it. So I don't know. I feel like the price, the price is the price, right? So if you think that you're going to get a ton of use out of the Portal, go ahead, buy it. $200 is not going to break the bank and it's it's a pretty good price. I think it's a pretty small price to pay for the convenience factor, right? I mean, it's made for a specific audience that can get the most use out of it. And also, I'm not saying that the Portal is going to be the best handheld device ever. I definitely don't think that. I'm just trying to state some of the reasons why this is a very useful product and why you should probably purchase this if you think you are a person that can get the greatest if you think that you're a person that will get good use out of this or we're thinking about picking one up. Now, of course, there are some negatives to this device. And the main one is that it streams video games. So that pretty much makes this thing useless without a Wi-Fi connection. You can't play games natively, meaning like you cannot download a video game on here and play it on an airplane or a car without Wi-Fi or like a train. You have to have a Wi-Fi connection. So that means the portal has to have a Wi-Fi connection and your PS5 also has to be connected to Wi-Fi. So that definitely sucks that you can't even play games on it and you have to have the Wi-Fi. But like I said, it's it's just the way streaming is. It kind of sucks. And as of right now, like I said, you can't download a game unless Sony changes something last minute, but I don't think that they're going to. Like I don't they probably have already produced like several million of these consoles or handheld devices whatever so i'm sure they're not going to make any last minute hardware adjustments but that doesn't mean somebody in the future can't somehow figure out how to mod a playstation portal to download games on it you could add storage or something like that i don't know if that's possible i don't know how to like come up with a mod like that you know i'm not savvy or anything with technology in that sense but i do think somebody might be able to figure out a way to mod the portal and if there is going to be a and if there ever is a mod for the portal where you could download games natively onto it, that's going to make this thing insane. It's going to make it a beast, which they definitely should have made it that, which I think they should have definitely made this console something that you could stream games as well as download games onto it. I don't really know why they didn't, maybe because of the price, maybe if it wasn't a game, maybe if you could download stuff, the price would have been like 400 or even 500 which is kind of crazy because that's the price of a PS5. But another downside is that this thing does not have a Bluetooth connection to it, which is wild in my opinion. But it does have a like a it does have an aux or audio jack, whatever. So you can plug in headphones, and they are making another product of a wireless like earbud headset that you can link that to the PlayStation Portal. So that kind of sucks that you're going to have to spend another like 100 or 200 dollars i don't remember exactly the price of the headset or earbuds coming out but you're going to have to purchase that as well if you want a wireless headset with your playstation portal which is definitely kind of an l i think that they should have included a wireless headset with this due to the price i think sony could have definitely figured out a way to make a cheap like earbud or headset whatever that's wireless and as well as released a more exclusive wireless headset that you could also pick up if you want a better quality earbud headset, if that makes any sense. Another downside to this is that you cannot use this with a PS4 and you can't just play PS5 games on this without actually owning a PS5. You need to own a PS5. So that means you have to purchase a $500 PlayStation 5, spend $200 for the portal. And if you want the wireless headset, that's another like $100 to $200. So at that price point, you could pretty much buy a cheap gaming PC if you wanted a PC, you know? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you make a decision if you want the PlayStation Portal or not. Like I said, this is a product made for a specific group of people that can find the most convenience out of it. This is not a console or a device that Sony wants in every single household. I believe that they, they understand who their audience is and what their demographic is for this console and I feel like it is going to be a success for what they are shooting for. Like, I don't think it's going to outsell the PSP. It's not going to outsell the Switch. But I definitely think that they're going to get a solid amount of sales out of this, probably. I don't really know. I don't work for Sony. Sony doesn't work with me. I'm just making this video just because it's an interesting topic. But hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.